Hi everyone, we're in the middle of day five of MBA Spotlight, uh, GMAT Club's first virtual MBA fair where we have top 20 MBA programs from all over the world come and talk about, well, their MBA programs. So we have um, MBA programs coming in every day to talk about how life is, and we also have current students weighing in on their MBA experience. And finally, we also have admission consultants and experts talking about your profiles. So without much ado, uh, please well, join me in welcoming Lauren from Duke, the Fuqua School of Business. Lauren, why don't you take it away? Great, thanks, Shavik. Um, hi, everyone. It's nice to see you today. Um, my name is Lauren Sutherland. I am an Associate Director of Admissions at the Fuqua School of Business at Duke University, and hope that you are all safe and well and adjusting to this new normal that we're in. But I'm excited to be able to connect with you this morning for us here in Durham um, and to tell you a little bit more about Fuqua. So I will start with um, the next slide that goes over some differentiators about the Duke MBA. So there's three things that come to mind when I'm thinking about what sets Duke apart. And those are culture, customization, and the community. So starting with culture, and I'll just touch on it a little bit because you're going to get to hear from four of our wonderful second year MBA students and we get to the Q&A portion who can speak firsthand to the, the culture of Team Fuqua. But the culture that our students bring to campus is really something that sets Fuqua apart. MBA programs can be competitive and cutthroat, and if that is what you're looking for, great. But if you're looking to get healthy competition along with supportive teammates that want to build you up, work towards team goals, and really help you develop as a person and a professional during your MBA, uh, then look no further than Fuqua. Um, if you do any research uh, online or talk with current students or alums, I think you'll hear over and over again, this mantra of Team Fuqua, which really is looking out for um, each other throughout the entire process and as alums and making sure that your individual goals are met through the collective goal of moving your team forward. Our students are genuinely happy people, and that really is a differentiator among MBA programs. So um, really focus on the programs that you that have people that you want to be around. And as you interact with Fuqua, I am sure that you're going to see that coming through with our students. The second piece is being able to customize your MBA. So this is a big investment. Uh, you're taking time out of the workforce. For some of you, you may be moving across the world for a new experience. So you want to make sure you can get everything out of it that you're hoping to for these two years. And at Fuqua, you can customize your MBA through over 100 electives, I believe um, 11 to 15 different concentrations, a second major, certificates, um, in addition to a really solid business foundation. So um, whatever it is you're planning to do post MBA, I'm confident that the Fuqua curriculum, the network, and our career center can help you get there. And then lastly, the community. So um, many of you may not have heard of Durham, North Carolina before. Uh, we are not a major metro area in the States, not a small town either. So it's a nice balance, but being in a place like Durham where all of the students who are coming to Fuqua are recreating their network when they get here um, really makes for a special collegiate experience for your MBA knowing you will probably end up in a major metro area afterwards. Um, our largest alumni bases are in New York City and in the Bay Area in California. So we're no stranger to helping you get to those places, but for your two years to be in a smaller town like Durham, where everyone is focused on building up that community and getting everything they can out of the experience, is really something that sets us apart and makes the MBA feel different than your pre-MBA or post-MBA life. Um, and I'll let the students talk more about this in the Q&A, but Durham is actually a really fun place to be. There are great restaurants, there's great things going on in the community. Um, so it's not dull by any means, but um, there's also not a flight away from what the MBA experience is on the weekends or people returning to their pre-MBA 
friends said in lives. So um, it is a great place. I hope that in the coming months to years, uh, you're able to come and visit us and experience that firsthand. All right. So I touched on some of the ways that you can customize your MBA, and I'm going to go through um, components of the Fuqua MBA pretty quickly here because I feel like there's a lot of value in getting to chat with us and chat with our students. Um, but to hit some highlights, it is a full-time MBA program. So it's a full two years with a summer internship in between your first and second year. And um, right now, the summer internships, many are taking place virtually from Durham. So you really get to take advantage of that community feel. Um, but know that um, we're not just a regional business school, even with our location, that students do um, typically have internships and full-time offers all over the world. Um, most of your classes will be team-based learning. All of your core classes during your first semester will be on the same team in the same section of students. So you really get to know a group of about 70 students very well um, and get to develop your teamwork skills in a different way um, all throughout that semester. There are many different co-curricular opportunities as well, along with what you would think of as the typical classroom experience. Some of those include our Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, um, where you get to do a consulting project for a company that contracts with Fuqua, a great opportunity to break into a new industry or to gain consulting experience if that's something you're hoping to get into post-MBA and you don't have that currently. And we have something called a mentored study, which is wonderful if you want to go into a niche industry or something that doesn't recruit as heavily at MBA programs. You can shadow a local entrepreneur to um, learn about their craft. And that's great. Um, I think of our people who want to go into private equity or venture capital, where it can be a little bit challenging to get that real world experience through an MBA. Doing a mentor study is a great opportunity um, to enhance that. Lastly, um, global opportunities are a huge part of the MBA experience. And I know that that is said with a big asterisk right now. And um, traveling in that piece of the MBA looks very different than um, it did last year. But making sure that you are going to a program that still has a global focus. So through your classmates. Um, that there is a lot of global exposure and that several areas of the world are represented um, is a great way to, to still gain a global experience, even if the travel components are a little bit more challenging. But in a typical year, um, about 80% of our MBA students will take advantage of a global experience. Um, I mentioned some of our classes. We have a business core, but over 100 different electives that you can take. Um, concentrations, certificates to customize your MBA. Um, something that is pretty popular is our M STEM major, which is a management sciences and technology um, add-on to your MBA. So you use some of your elective courses to earn um, this designation. And for any of you um, that have um, a work circumstance or getting the STEM designation from a U.S. business school is important for your work authorization. That is the way that uh, international students gain STEM designation through the Fuqua MBA is by doing our M-STEM program. And then if you really want to maximize your time in Durham and want to spend a little bit more than the two years here with us, there are five dual degree programs at Duke that you can take advantage of in fields like law, medicine, energy, public policy. Um, but even if you don't want to do a dual degree, you can take up to four classes outside of Fuqua um, elsewhere at Duke during your time. So you can still gain that exposure without necessarily needing to commit to additional years of graduate school. We do have dedicated career resources, which um, I'm confident everyone will interact with the Career Center at some point during their Duke MBA. Um, but those resources vary from meeting one on one with a sector director who is a professional staff member focused on the sector in which you want to recruit in um, or working with a career fellow, one of our second year students 
who helps first years get their resumes ready, prep for interviews, um, really kind of um, be a peer counselor to you in the career space. And then our professional clubs are a huge help in prepping you for recruitment, getting um, that networking practice in, which is so important as you're meeting with companies. So um, there's a lot of different approaches to the Career Management Center, and you'll find one that works for you um, and that you're most comfortable with. But know that they are accessible. They've been accessible even as we moved remote uh, at the drop of a hat this past spring. And so um, I'm sure they're going to continue perfecting the, the remote support that they're giving to students. And then hopefully by the time uh, you would be matriculating into the program, there's um, in-person support as well. And then lastly, the extracurricular is such an important piece of the MBA because careers are important. That is most likely why you're taking time out of your career to come back and go to business school is to make a career change. Um, academics are also important. If you go to a top business school, uh, you're going to get a great foundation of coursework and academics and, and business curriculum to prepare you. But where things start to really differentiate are in how you get engaged outside of the classroom. So uh, join one, of, one or four of our 50 plus student clubs. Um, do some of the large scale graduate events that happen with all graduate students at Duke, like Camp Out where you camp for a weekend to um, get into a lottery to win season tickets to support the Duke men's basketball team. NBA Games is our partnership with the North Carolina Special Olympics. So it's a really nice way to raise money for an incredible cause and also to leave a lasting mark on this community beyond your two years. And then um, the last thing I'll highlight is Blue Cup, which is our friendly competition with our peers down the road at UNC Chapel Hill um, that is a competition between the MBA programs and all sorts of different categories. So the next slide uh, is an overview of a class profile at Fuquan. This is the profile for our rising second years. Our class size was 395. That varies year to year. Um, I believe the graduating class that just graduated in May was 420, and we've had a class as large as 440 in the past. So um, around 400 is typically what you'll see. Um, our average age is 28 with five and a half years of work experience, but those are just averages. Every year we have people um, who come in with two years of work experience up through 12 or 13. Um, as long as you know that a daytime full-time program is the right one for you, and that comes through in the application. Um, don't let these averages and ranges deter you, um, because it really is a personal experience as what's best for you and your career trajectory. Um, our undergraduate GPA is posted here for um, a 4.0 scale, and we know there's a lot of schools outside of the United States that don't operate on a 4.0 scale. Um, and there's even a handful within the U.S. that don't do that. So um, report your GPA on the scale that it is on your transcripts and know that um, we have guides to help us assess your undergraduate experience no matter where that took place in the world. And our GMAT range is here. Um, that is for the GMAT. The GRE range is a little bit broader, um, and we are starting to get a critical mass of those to be able to publish a range in the future, but right now still don't have um, enough of that to publish. But our average GMAT is a 705, so kind of right in the middle of that range. And then outside of the slightly more boring components but are necessary in the application are what is the actual makeup of the class? So the components that might really mean a lot to you. Um, so 43% of our class of 2021 um, identify as female. Uh, we would love to get to 50-50 split and have gender parity in the class, and that's certainly a goal um, of, of ours in business school, but each year are hoping to increase the representation of women in business to make for a more well-rounded experience for all of our students. 16% uh, of our cohort comes in married. Uh, Durham is a really family-friendly place, and so um, if you are considering moving with a partner or a family, um, it can be a really great location in terms of cost of living, 
from the schools, opportunities for your partner. 37% um, of our class identify as an, a minority, and 17% of our, our students identify as underrepresented minorities in business school. And then for international citizenship, 37% of this past class um, had an international citizenship, and about 30% only had an international citizenship and weren't dual citizens with the United States. Careers after business school. Again, one of the biggest reasons you might be looking at an MBA. And um, year in and year out, consulting is our top industry that grads are going into. I think you'll find that across the board at business school programs. Consulting um, is often a driver for getting people to business school and is a great first career post MBA, and about 30 to 35% of our class tend to go into consulting. The second most popular industry is technology, and that has been on the rise for the last three years, um, surpassing finance for the first time in Fuqua's history three years ago. So um, a boom in tech companies recruiting at Fuqua and then seeing how grads are doing and wanting to continue to re recruit at Fuqua has, has really propelled that. Um, and then finance is our third most popular um, industry for grads to go into. And we put healthcare on here also because that is one of the driving factors that attracts a lot of people to Fuqua is our presence in healthcare and our health sector management certificate. So if you're interested in that space, definitely look into that certificate um, and um, know that there's a, a great support system for helping you find careers in that field post MBA. All right. I'm gonna, again, breeze through this because you can find additional information about our application um, in Fuqua specific virtual sessions. Um, but I do wanna make sure that you have the latest and greatest about what the admissions committee is looking for and um, some of the components of our application and ways you can stand out with those. So you'll see our deadlines posted on the right of the slide. And we did shift our fall deadlines forward just a bit um, so that you have a little bit more time to uh, get a standardized test scheduled, to interact with our community. All of the things that are a little bit more challenging um, with COVID, we wanted to make sure um, there was enough time for you to still get those. So um, early action is our binding round, and you'll see that deadline is in September and has a pretty quick turnaround of just over a month for getting your decision back from Fuqua. And then rounds one, two, and three are standard rounds, not binding, um, more in line with what you would see at, at other programs. Um, but if you know that, that Fuqua is the place for you, consider early action. And then, um, of course, apply as early in the cycle as you can with a strong application. Um, I know that probably on the minds of anyone thinking of applying in the next year is what the impact of deferrals will have on the admissions process for um, the incoming class. And that's a great question. It's a bit of a moving target right now. Um, we'll know a lot more about what our class size will look like as it gets closer to the start date. Um, but we um, anticipate that we'll have we will have some deferrals this year um so far we have um, not had as many students um take that option as we were anticipating a lot of people know this is still the right time for them to get an mba and so that's really encouraging um for us for our second year students to know um, that they're going to have a really great robust class coming in after them but also for you as a potential applicant um, but as there is movement in our daytime mba at Fuqua, there's also going to be movement in our specialty masters, one-year programs, our executive programs. And so um, we hope to have the same class size this year and to have a class size between 400 and 440 again next year. Um, and don't think that will have a huge impact on selectivity with deferrals because we have a lot of options um, in terms of class size and growth um, thanks to the robust number of programs that Fuqua has. So back to the components of the application. Um, academics are something we have to address in the application. We wanna make sure that you are gonna be successful at Fuqua. So 
The three things that go into that are your standardized test score, your GPA, and the strength of your undergrad institution. For the standardized test, this year we are accepting the executive assessment, which is the shorter version of the GMAT, um, without having to get prior approval. So if you feel like that'll be the test that um, showcases your abilities the best, you can submit that to us just as you would a GMAT or a GRE, and you don't need um, any additional admissions committee approval. The next component of the um, application that we address is work experience. So that should be the next um, click through on the slide. And the biggest thing here that we're looking for is your trajectory and your management of people, projects, or budgets. So make sure that those things are highlighted on your one page resume. I have yet to see a reason that anyone for a daytime MBA needs longer than a one page resume. I know it's tricky, but um, it will help you tremendously in the admissions process because if 99.9% .9 of the other applicants have a one page resume and we get to your two page resume, it better wow us and blow us away um, with all of your accomplishments because um, one page is, is more than enough for every applicant I've encountered in five years. The next piece that we look at is your leadership and community involvement. So this is a evaluative piece of our application. We score it just like we score your work and your academics. And um, we want to see that you've been involved with things other than work. So what are you doing um, in your community? What did you do during undergrad? What clubs were you involved in? Volunteer opportunities, leadership positions. Um, tell us about those. Please don't leave that section blank. It's such a, a heartbreaker when we fall in love with an applicant and then realize that they have skipped over that section um, because it does count for us, just like um, your academics, your interview, all of the other components. Um, the fourth piece that we evaluate are your essays. And um, we actually trimmed down our essays a little bit this year. So we only have one short answer question that asks you about your post MBA goals, your short term goals and your plan B. So really think through that and make sure that you're answering it well, because that's the only short answer that you have for FUQA this year. Um, we do have our we consider it iconic um, 25 things about you, which is where we want to know. Um, Truly, 25 facts that make you you. Uh, it is where we learn the most about applicants in the admissions process and um, is something that you can start now as a list in your phone as you think of the interesting things that make you tick. Make sure you're, you're writing those down so that that essay becomes a little bit easier to write. And then our second essay is about how you'll get involved in the FUQA community. And um, we have changed that one up a little bit this year to ask for three ways that you're going to be involved at Fuqua. The three most meaningful things to you and how you're going to make an impact um, so that you don't have to uh, list every club that you can find on our website, but really find the things that you identify with the most and think that you can have the, the greatest contribution to. Um, the fifth area of the application are the letters of recommendation. And this is another area where we've had a slight change this year. Um, we do use the GMAT common letter of recommendation, but this year we're only requiring one professional letter of recommendation with a second being optional. So with only requiring one, we would really like to see a current or past supervisor. And if you can't do, um, do that, then you should consider submitting two um, so that we get a well-rounded view of you as a professional. And then the last piece is your interview. And at Fuqua, um, there are a couple of ways to interview. We have an open interview period as well as an invitation interview. Um, and the details about those will be coming out later this summer because with all of the accommodations that are being made with COVID, um, our open interview will have to look a little bit different. So we're still ironing that out, but stay tuned for what that will look like. All right. That wraps up um, the high level, very quick overview of the Fuqua MBA and the admissions process. Do stay connected with us. Um, 
If you want to learn more or want to dig deeper into some of the things that you heard about today, check out our virtual events calendar um, at the, the website that's on the slide. And of course, you can connect with us on social media through our student ambassadors. Um, but we would love to, to continue learning more about you as you learn about us. So I will open it up for Q&A now, um, but would love for my uh, second year students that are joining to introduce themselves. Perfect, I can get started. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, hey everyone, my name's Eddie Flood. Um, I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska. Prior to Fuqua, I worked in consulting and I'll be interning in investment banking this summer. So super happy to have you guys here and happy to talk about anything. He will be interning. I'll go next. Um, hi, I'm Molly Bambera. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I think I saw somebody mention that they're live from Baltimore as well. So good to have a fellow Baltimorean on the phone today. Um, I was living in New York City before school for about five years, working in risk advisory consulting at a public accounting company. And my plan is to pivot into strategy consulting after school. I could go next. Um, I'm Jigesh Patel. Before coming to Fuqua, I was a K-12 teacher in Arkansas. And after Fuqua, I'll be going into strategy consulting. Um, Hello everyone, this is Amanda Way. Uh, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada. I was there before school, uh, was working for about four years in management consulting and strategy. Then after school, I'm headed into investment banking in New York. Awesome. So I'm so happy to have you guys here also. Uh, great job, Lauren, on sharing a lot of FICO elements. We have a ton, a ton of questions. <laughs> So I'm going to start with some career questions, especially because a lot of your current students here recruited in finance and consulting. So I'll take consulting first. And if any one of you wants to chime in, it could be you, Jigesh, or Eddie, because uh, Eddie, you recruited finance. Uh, so do you want to walk us through the consulting process, Jigesh, and how did that work for you? And then I'm going to move to finance, too. Yeah, so I came to Fuqua not knowing what consulting was. Um, so my process started with understanding what consulting actually is. So the consulting club at Fuqua does like a, a day long um, conference on learning 101 of consulting, um, what, what people look for in consulting, what you actually do. So I attended that session. And I was like, okay, this seems very interesting and I, something that I would want to learn more about. So I started to learn more about consulting that way. And then um, the consulting club does a roadmap, uh, which is just how they teach you how to do a case interview with consulting uh, firms. So I went through the roadmap process. And after that, um, I did um, lots of case um, interviews with my fellow classmates. So I started with casing um, with the first year students. And then once I felt like I had the motions down of how those that interview process um, works, I started to case with second year students. And then at that point, a lot of the firms, um, you know, kind of you submit your resume and they invite you for interviews. And so right. after it, um, after doing mock interviews with secondary students, a lot of the firms that in, that invited me to interview with them um, also contacted me to kind of help me prep. Um, and those were a lot of those individuals were Fuqua alums, so my alums also came through and helped me really um, make sure I was prepared. Um, and at that point, um, uh, you know, it's up to individuals to do well on those interviews. But um, that was kind of my journey through the consulting recruiting process. Awesome. Also, Jigesh, your dog, who I'm guessing also goes to Fuqua, is uh, yep. <laughs> sure to to her. But till then, Amanda and Eddie, do you want to chime in on how your recruitment was for banking? You can go yeah. for it if you'd like. Okay, cool. I'll keep it brief and Amanda, keep me honest here. But so I'd say the kind of the two things that stuck out to me on finance or investment banking recruiting were one, the structure of it. I mean, coming in, I didn't kind of know that there would be this huge plan in place and Jig alluded to it for consulting, but very similar to consulting investment banking. We had a roadmap for lack of a better term of these are the things you need to accomplish as a first year to really put yourself in a position to succeed. And then the second biggest thing was a combination of 
second year students, career center and Duke alums. I mean, all three of those parties do a phenomenal job of really having your back and, and again, putting you in a position to succeed. So, you know, to kind of sum up the timeline, generally, typically all the investment banks will come to campus, give their presentation of here's who we are, here, here's who our clients are, here's the deals we work on. Um, and then after those initial presentations, it really becomes networking intensive through other, you know, events that banks put on through your own reach outs to Duke alums and people they connect you with. And then ideally the process ends kind of early January, hopefully with an internship. So Amanda, anything I missed? Amanda, do you want to uh, weigh in on that and add anything? I mean, I think Eddie touched on it all. Um, it's a pretty structured process and the second years are very helpful throughout the entire journey. Uh, and so I think you're set up really well if you do decide to come to Duke, um, if that's one of your goals. Awesome. So just stepping away from recruitment questions a little bit, but one thing that uh, I'm getting questions about and uh, one thing that um, is Fuqua is a lot known for is collaboration and Team Fuqua. So Molly, do you do you have anything to talk about that or any example where Team Fuqua came alive for you in the last year on campus? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think all of us on the phone probably have many, many examples um, right. that we could kind of take the whole time talking about. Um, but Team Fuqua was one of the main drivers for me looking at Duke. Um, and as Lauren kind of touched upon, it really means um, collectively pursuing success together and not elbowing each other out of the way in order to get to your end goal. Um, and I think it takes a special type of person to self-select into the Team Fuqua network. Um, and, you know, it's proved true over and over again, but a few specific examples, um, and Eddie, you might remember this one. Um, one of our good friends, Christian, um, he has this amazing dog named Murphy. Um, Murphy went missing probably two months into school. And at that point, you know, we had only known each other for two, two months, but um, he assembled a crew of about 60 people that dispersed wow. across all of Durham looking for Murphy. And whether by car, bike, or foot, 60 of us were out looking and texting in group me trying to find this dog. And ultimately, Murphy was found. Wow. And we all celebrated afterwards. But I think that that was kind of a true, like, nobody, everybody kind of stepped up to the plate without being asked um, to make sure that our friend's dog was, um, was found. So I'd be interested if anybody else has other uh, stories on the phone. That is such a cool example. And please feel free to share if you have a different story. But while while that happens, Lauren, I'm getting a lot of questions about admission. And one common theme of question that we get that sort of differentiates FICWA from other school is the early action uh, round. Yeah. So, um, so let, let's once and for all, let's try to get this rumor quashed. Uh, do, do people have a higher chance of getting in if they apply early? Yes, though it is only slightly higher. Um, and I will say if there's an area of your application that you are worried about, so your test score isn't a great reflection of your abilities or you're light on work experience or there's something that you're worried the admissions committee might have a hold up on, early action is absolutely a good choice for you because where we might have one hold up in your application, we don't have a hold up on whether or not Fuqua is the right place for you because you're telling us that through early action. So we're able to take a few more risks on right. applicants that may not emerge um, when we're looking at the, the group of 3000 later in the cycle. Um, so in that regard, early action can be really helpful. But in terms of um, like how much better is it it's only a few percentage points difference in terms of selectivity but it can be a world of difference for the right kind of applicant awesome um getting a few questions around i mean it's 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 almost impossible to do an mba session at in this time without getting a question on how covid impacted people's mba plans and recruiting and internship but uh, I would love to know, because all of you uh, are spending your summer internships uh, in Fuqua right now, working remotely, but it would be great to know if any of you have can summarize 
Um, the impact of COVID, um, you know, positives, negatives. I'm not sure if there are any positives, but just the general situation would be great. Um, Amanda, you can start us off if you want, and uh, I can ask from one more person if we need more information. Sure. Um, so we'll start from an academic standpoint. Um, we did do our last term spring two online. I think the professors did a fantastic job of continuing to engage us. Uh, and you know, we learned how to utilize Zoom to our best abilities, which I think is actually coming into handy for a lot of our summer internships in which a lot of us will be remote and using Zoom to connect and participate in the programming. Um, and then from a you know, social standpoint, yes, of course, with everything going on, it's definitely been tougher, but I think in Durham, we've definitely found ways you know, with things that are open like golf, uh, is something that you know I've taken up again, which is a great way to get out, get some fresh air. I know a lot of people go on walks on East Campus, which is really close to 9th Street. So there are definitely still ways to connect uh, with one another. So, you know, we're still finding a way to build that do community, even in these times. Sounds good. And if anyone else wants to chime in with how COVID impacted recruiting or internships or, you know, like full time recruiting would be great. Lauren, feel free to chime in on that as well. Yeah, so I could talk a little bit about consulting. So I felt like most firms were very understanding of like working with students. So my firm, um, McKinsey, for example, like told everybody that if you, for example, are you know impacted with COVID personally, like, and there is a reason why you can't do the internship, we'll still give you a full time offer. Um, and so they were very understanding. And if you still wanted to do the internship, you could do it online virtually, and you would still be working on a client specific project. Right. Um, and it would be like very much, you know, in terms of Ryan, like working morning until uh, late evening, like, so you're working on a real project. Um, and then um, and I felt like that a lot of the firms were very similar um, in that to share that sentiment of making sure uh, to give you that authentic consulting experience. Um, yeah. Of course, like the social aspect is a little bit different of like working with client. It's more Zoom rather than, you know, you being on a client site. So um, those things you can't really necessarily change. But I think that a lot of the firms were very much like what we will do everything possible to make sure that you um, as a student, get the best consulting, authentic experiences as, as possible. Thanks, Jagesh. I mean, I will say though, consulting without airports or flights sounds like the dream job. So, <laughs> Laurie, yeah. I'm getting a lot of questions around, um, you know, financial aid and how to actually fund your MBA. And you know, the MBA can be expensive, right? So, can you tell us about processes at FIQA that are in place for not only financial aid, but how do people fund their uh, MBA program and other finance related questions. So would love to know more about that. Absolutely. So we have a merit based scholarship process at Fuqua. So your application for admission is also your application for scholarship. Every admitted student is evaluated for a scholarship. Um, so we're looking at all of the components of your application to um, award those and to help offset some of the cost of the MBA. Um, the other side of that is the financial aid component, and a lot of our students will have a combination of personal funds, student loans, and scholarships to be able to fully fund their MBA, but Fuqua does have a really robust um, international student loan program, and so um, absolutely take a look at that if that um, applies to your situation. The other thing that I like to highlight, because we do have a lot of students that are social impact focused, and when you're thinking about the return on investment on that, and like, will I ever be able to pay back my student loans, is that Fuqua does have a loan assistance program for people who are going into nonprofits, social impact space, government roles, um, where we will assume your student loans for up to eight years, depending on the year and the application, um, it is an application process, so it's not a guarantee, but it's our way of demonstrating that team Fuqua mentality that if you want to use business for good, we want to make that possible for you as much as possible. So um, look into the common things, scholarships, student loans, but also look into things that schools offer if your industry um, might prohibit you from paying back those loans as quickly as um, you would like. 
Awesome. So I've been told that um, we are running out of time, but uh, I just wanted to end on um, anything that you would like to say to prospective applicants. Uh, I'm not sure if Molly, you had your hand up, but uh, if you wanted to add something, please let me know. But both Lauren, Molly, or any other students, if you would like to end the session with one thought for prospective students, this is the time. Um, I, I would just say in terms of, you know, one thing um, in preparing for this session, you know, the application process is long and arduous and, um, you know, looking back, the, the GMAT was definitely um, an area that caused me a lot of challenge. So I would say, you know, the sooner you get started with all of it, um, the better. And certainly feel free to reach out to current students. Um, I think, you know, in talking to current students while I was um, going through the admissions process, that provided the most clarity for me in terms of where I felt that I would fit the best. Um, so, you know, network early um, and, and get your essays and, and all of that stuff done early so that you're set up for um, success in the fall. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molly. Lauren, do you, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I'll just say, um, I think it's really easy to get caught up in the statistics that schools publish and to feel like maybe I don't have the background that can really be successful in business school. I'm not coming from finance. I'm not coming from consulting, but don't count yourself out. I think some of the most um, interesting applicants and then students are those that have um, unique experiences or want to do something really different and are going to show us that they can do that through the Fuqua MBA. So really tell your story through the application, but don't count yourself out before you even um, hit submit. Awesome. Well, I really wanted to thank you, Lauren, and all the current students so much for being here. This was a great session. We had a ton of people and a ton of questions. Um, and um, I will love to have you guys again. And this was awesome. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.